tell you a little bit about this show before I plunge into the very short excerpt that I'm going to show you. Uh, the, 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 the show, the play, is called Industrious Angels. And it was born at the Co-Festival of Performance. Yes. In Amherst, Massachusetts. In Amherst, Massachusetts. And it was nurtured. And that's my home away from home, right? Uh, it was nurtured at my home theater, the Bloomsburg Theater Ensemble in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, and the way it came about was, uh, I was I was driving to Amherst uh, because I had uh, maybe foolishly signed up for a course in making solo theater. And uh, this was a real sort of bold choice on my part because uh, when I make theater, I make it in collaboration with my, my theater company. I never created a solo <laughs> show before. And I was also driving with a really guilty conscience because I was supposed to come with an idea. <laughs> 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 no. And, and uh, uh, I had been, I had been, I just pulled myself through um, and was now clear of a four-year collaboration with an Egy Egyptian shadow puppet theater company, right. mm -hmm. which was a wonderful project and very difficult and very wonderful and very occupying. Um, and uh, so I was driving to Amherst with a relatively unoccupied mind, no idea. So I started thinking, OK, when my theater company makes work, we make work about the place where we live. Uh, what do I know about Amherst, Massachusetts? Well, Emily Dickinson lived there. Well, I'm not going to make a piece about Emily Dickinson. Right. <laughs> 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 That's been done to death. Right. So, so I get there and I, I took a tour of the Emily Dickinson house, which I had done before. Um, it is it is marvelous. If you get to Amherst, of course, go to the Coe Festival, but also take a tour of the house. It is, they've done a great job preserving it. Um, the docents are all brilliant, um, and they all quote poetry, and they have you read poetry, and it's, mm -hmm. it's just beautifully done. This time, as I stepped out of her bedroom, that bedroom where she wrote the close to 1,800 poems that she wrote during her lifetime, mostly in secret, uh, most of them never published, most of them found after her death, hidden away in chests and drawers. As I stepped out of that bedroom into the hallway, I was hit by a flood of memory. One of the memories was that my mother read me Emily Dickinson poetry when I was little. Mm -hmm. And another memory was that I was actually reading an Emily Dickinson poem to my mother at the moment of her death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I got an idea. <laughs> you know, this had to be explored. Another memory was that my mother, like Emily Dickinson, was a writer. Uh, unlike Emily Dickinson, who was very proud of her work, she knew she was good, um, uh, my mother had a lot of self-doubts, considered herself a failed writer because she didn't publish much in her lifetime. And after her death, I found her writings mm -hmm. hidden away mm -hmm. in chests and drawers. Mm -hmm. So I started working on the piece. Um, and I found very quickly that probably a lot of you know this, mm, probably most solo shows are never made alone. Um, they're made in collaboration. And uh, my collaborators were my incredibly uh, imaginative scenic designer, Elaine Williams, who I've worked with over many years. And Elaine does a lot of designing for the Center for Puppetry Arts in Atlanta. And uh, we also used the crafts people at the Center for Puppetry Arts to help create the really weird kind of special effects that I have in this show. The scenic element, it's, it's as if it's an 
a sort of shadowy attic room, workroom, playroom. It's filled with curio, curio cabinets, desks, work tables. I do a lot of actual work in the course of the piece, paper folding, cutting, making shadow puppets while I'm talking to, to, to my listeners. Um, and there are lots of drawers, chests and drawers, chests and drawers, <laughs> hiding places for mementos and unmentionables. Right? Uh, so, <laughs> every, time, every time I open a drawer in this piece, a surprise mm -hmm. pops out. Um, I call Industrious Angels, which is actually a quote from Emily Dickinson, uh, a handcrafted shadow puppet memory play with music that evokes the hidden creative lives of women, women's handiwork, uh, mother-daughter bloodlines, and the ghost of Emily Dickinson. Um, she, she appears as a, as a little shadow puppet in my play. Now, I can't do most of the shadow work in here uh, because, well, you see why. Um, but there is a lot of uh, shadow work with little, little, little shadows of little creatures appearing on walls and disappearing and so on. But you're not going to see that. Um, <laughs> I'll do the part that doesn't require that. Uh, Mama read poetry to me when I was little. Mama's not so secret plan for me was that I was going to grow up to be a world-famous poet and receive an honorary doctorate from the prestigious <coughs> Smith College in faraway Massachusetts. Back in the 1940s, Mama had received a scholarship from the prestigious Smith College in <laughs> faraway Massachusetts, but her parents couldn't afford the train fare from Kansas City, so she couldn't go. Uh, Mama read poetry to me at lunchtime while I ate my mac and cheese. The mac and cheese was meant to fortify my bones. <laughs> the poetry was meant to grow me into a better person. The poetry was meant to fortify my soul or grow me into a world famous poet. This is a world famous poem by a world famous poet, says Mama. My favorite poet, says Mama, Emily Dickinson. She reads the poem to me. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. What does the poem mean, says Mama? How does a poet express her meaning, says Mama? How would you write a poem on the same subject, says Mama? She looks 
show it. The babies we were are buried, but their shadows are plodding on. <laughs> Says Emily Dickinson, world famous poet. So 
photo show with multiple voices. And like Lori said, I was really glad she said that nothing is a solo show. This was a really long, arduous process. And I have worked on other solo shows that didn't take that long. So it was interesting for me to do something that was like, really, I have to change it? Um, and uh, I also did it a year ago at the Co Festival before I had, and it really helped shape it in terms of the lighting. And it taught me something about how lighting can change how you decide to move and where you move yeah. and where the focus is. But we don't have Sabina's wonderful lighting here. But I also continue to work on it uh, since then with Morgan Jeunesse, refining and tightening everything. So what I'm going to do is some excerpts if I feel like I need to explain something. And I'm cutting inside things. So if it feels like a character didn't finish their whole story, that's because I'm not finishing it. <laughs> um, but I wanted to just show some elements of how I'm using all these voices and how that's led to other things. The only thing I would like you to know is that normally I have a little keyboard on stage, which I play as well as trigger. I have a foot pedal which is sometimes seen and sometimes not. So in terms of the working with people who are helping me mm. choreograph, and like, when am I really stepping on it, and when am I just walking out mm. when the sound happens? Mm. And then there's uh, this thing, which is much easier to travel with in a rural area. So <laughs> I'm going to do a few excerpts. Um, here's a story. About a girl, a boy, a child, a grandmother, a teacher, a student. There's a woman in college. There's a girl in high school. A boy working in a restaurant. There's a 12-year-old, 15-year-old, 22-year-old, one man, girl, boy from Pakistan, Russia, Croatia, Togo, Mexico. A Egypt. A story. About a woman, a man, a girl, a boy, a child, a lover, a father, an uncle, a daughter, Man a child. girl child, waiting. Daughter. There's a nine year old daughter. Brother. 16 year old brother. Grandmother. 48 year old grandmother. Brooklyn. Catherine from Duke. Queens. Buffalo. <laughs> New Haven. Buffalo. Waiting. waiting. Looking. Long listening. Waiting. Waiting, waiting for waiting. papers. Waiting for an answer, waiting for immigration, waiting for the papers, waiting for the petition, waiting for the answer from the papers that were filed with INS. Change to BCIS. Change to USCIS. Change to Homeland Security, the government, the agency, the agent in Nevada, New York, New Hampshire. It's a post office, an address. Somewhere else. What's the answer, the status, the green card from the SATs, ELAs, GREs? Your status. What's your status? In the country, out of the country, your mother, father, sister, brother, want to go back? She wants to go back. Can't go. Can't stay. Can't get back in. Should she go? Should she stay? In the shadows. There's a woman, a man, a girl, a boy, a child. In high school and college, wondering if maybe she should leave. leave. <laughs> maybe go, maybe stay, maybe yeah. leave. Looking and longing maybe and leave. waiting to find somewhere that's home. Ain't nowhere to go back to. Looking and longing and waiting, waiting to, to find, find somewhere home. that's home. And then the lights shift magically, <laughs> like incredibly smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as the street music fades, and I'll just do a little of this character for you. So that all happened in a nice, smooth way. Liz! Young Liz! Remember me? You came to my fourth grade class, you remember? We were doing those stories and performances about our names. Yeah, that was me! <laughs> You got a good memory, miss. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot your name. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We just call you the story lady. <laughs> that was mine, a child of the world, Guatemalan, Chinese, Italian, Puerto Rican, you That was me. <laughs> You 
guest artists in high schools now? Colleges too? Well, the heck? Oh, shoot, quit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, miss. Bye, miss. <laughs> and so she goes on to talk a little bit more and make the interconnection with whoever this woman is and keeps kind of insulting her, <laughs> but not really. And, um, and then uh, that takes me into um, a scene of having to direct and rush to direct a, a high school class with new immigrant teenagers. The only reason I wanted to do the Queens thing is because the themes of home, Queens, which is a borough that was like neglected for a long time, mm -hmm. and other things keep coming back over and over. And names, what's the meaning of your name? Mm -hmm. um, so those keep coming back. But I'll cut to uh, a part where I uh, uh, end up, oh, it doesn't matter really right now. I have to direct a project I run with immigrant teenagers. I get there, and not one of them has their lines memorized. <laughs> Half of them are running around the room playing games. You don't understand. There's going to be a performance in two weeks. <laughs> no, you see, they're all new English learners. I tell them, you're driving me up the wall. They look up the wall to see what's there. <laughs> I tell them it's an expression. I tell them explaining expressions is like opening a Pandora's box. <laughs> <laughs> there's hope at the bottom. <laughs> the kids take everything literally. <laughs> the rest of the kids are lying down on the floor. Limp limbs, drowsy eyes. I'm exhausted. So I lie down on the floor with them. I'll use this tool. Very mature. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I was in a car accident three days ago. Oh, you don't look like anything's broken. You okay, miss? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> really, I'm feeling like a broken down train. One of the many things going through my mind besides the fact that I almost died in a car accident was, who's going to take over my youth program if I die? <laughs> <laughs> I was saying this to the kids. Instead, I said, you were all supposed to have your lines memorized by today. Focus! It's what I tell the kids all the time, no matter what's going on. Focus. Theater's supposed to be fun. You're ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> I was making them work too hard. They tell me they're exhausted from having to speak English all day. Miss, when I talk in English, I have to use so much energy of me. In your language, you don't have to think. But in, when you use the English words, you have to think and talk. So it's like two kinds of energy use. Mm -hmm. And also when I go home, I speak in my language. My teeth, my tongue, my mouth, everything is so relaxing. <laughs> okay. So I put the scripts aside, and I ask them to sing in their own languages. Say songs, whatever they want. But you want to understand us. Yes, I will. You'd be surprised. <laughs> if you sit up and you do it like you mean it. Someone from Nigeria sings a song. The girls start showing and clapping again. Some other girls start stepping. <laughs> hey, I got an idea. What about tongue twisters in your own language? They are brilliant. <laughs> they are masters. They're relaxed. I get up and record them one at a time. Oh my god, I have an idea. I'm going to go home and I'm going to mix these into a track. And uh, we'll make a movement piece. And your own languages are going to be the soundscape. And you won't have to speak English. I don't know why I didn't think of this. <laughs> I play that for this hip hop engineer that I work with, Torre. He says, That's cool. It's like hip hop. 
sample that. I tell them, you can't sample that. You don't even know the kids. I made that track for the kids, and I already made that track, and that's like stealing. He says, it's not stealing. It's recreating. <laughs> what you're doing is like hip hop. Uh-uh. What I'm doing is nothing to do with hip hop. I'm just recording original things that I found myself, and then I'm making beats out of that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I walk into the auditorium. Alternative sentencing institution. Jail but school. Have you been in one of these places? School but jail. 24 hours, locked doors, guards, teenagers, boys, tough, tall, angry. Last stop, before jail, jail. It's a two hour train ride from New York City. Snow, rolling hills, country homes, farms, prisons, much like this area. <laughs> boys from New York City, fresh air, barbed wire. I'm here to teach writing, juggling, theater. <laughs> Great. I'm sure. I'm looking up at them. Can't they sit down? Mm -hmm. Then I'll have some authority. I decide to do something they can't do. I start juggling. Balls are flying. They're laughing. <laughs> I do some tricks and I catch a ball on two fingers. Uh -huh. Is that good enough? Uh -huh. I juggle backwards. Discover something. 
thing that can keep you sane. Mm -hmm. S says, I want to go back to crackers. I don't believe them. I want to go back to jail, jail. So I don't have to do all this school. I want to watch TV. I believe him. <laughs> I'm a sociopath. I don't know what to believe. K desperately wants to get out. The one who draws. But when he gets out, he's going to be 15 years old and he'll have no more live. S wants to juggle with the balls on you. And K says, those are props, man. you got to respect the props. <laughs> Yo, miss, what about you? You gonna write something about you? I write a piece about being 12 years old and in the seventh grade. About a big black girl named Mary who was 16 and in the seventh grade. Everyone was scared of her, even the boys. And I wrote about my father dying over Christmas vacation. He and I had the flu. I got better. But he got sicker and went to the hospital and died three days later, drowning in his own lungs. Mm. He was 48 years old. 48. And I wrote how the day I came back to school, Mary kicked the boy out from the seat across from me and said, Hey, Sloan, I hear your father died. Mm. I couldn't speak. All I could do was nod. Mine too, she said. And I wrote about how out of those 67 white kids at that mostly black junior high school, I was one of the few white kids who didn't get beat up. You lucky, miss. Lucky because of Mary? No, because you had a father that loved you. Whew, he's smart at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. He's right. I'm lucky. I'm going home to a big, strong man and a warm they're going back to their cottages. 24 hour garden life. What it takes to get out isn't half of what it takes to stay out. What it takes to get out isn't half of what it takes to stay out. Um, so I'm gonna leave that excerpt there. And what happens in the play is that as it goes along, the relationship between me and the Muslim girl that explained about English kind of starts intersecting. And as I keep working with kids over the years, they ask me about my life. I reveal a little more when I feel like it's important because something is missing in the story and end up uh, revealing the truth about my grandmother's suicide, which was probably connected to why my father kind of just sank and dropped dead. But it ends up opening up this other girl's story to me at the end of the play. And a lot of very crazy, and I don't mean crazy like, you know, wild, but just things that aren't typical stories happen, like a Muslim kid inside a school uh, cuts off the ponytail, a Muslim kid from Pakistan cuts off the ponytail of a Sikh kid from India. Mm. So what I'm doing mm. is mm. I'm talking mm. about the border countries like China and Tibet, the Jewish kids from, uh, the Bukharan Jewish kids from Tajikistan and the Muslim kids from Afghanistan. So it ended up being a lot of what I was dealing with. And Morgan and uh, Warren and a couple other people really pushed me. And Torrey, the guy that says that's cool, mm -hmm. he comes back at the end of the play also. Kept pushing me to just write the truth, you know? And that was my kind of um, draw to hip hop was, uh, basically the audience, what gets revealed is that I grew up and I lived through two deaths in a fire by the time I was 15 in New Haven, and there were, hip hop was growing up out of the fires in the Bronx at the mm -hmm. same time. So um, those kinds of things. But I wanted to do like a somewhat coherent section for today. And I have no idea if there's like four more minutes of time, but I was going to see if it was possible to do something with multiple voices with you with anybody who's game. Um, and what this project has led me to, so you see I'm using like Ableton Live and sampling a lot of things, and I'm a radio producer, so I'm doing <laughs> this. But I'm doing it in a symphony where I recorded um, people in Arabic and Chinese and Russian mm -hmm. and peppered that as the echo of what was happening in the symphonic song stuff. And so I do have uh, five scripts of something if there are Three, even three or four or five people that are gay. If anybody, does anyone speak another language? Anything, it doesn't matter. 
matter. Uh, what language? Mandarin, can you do like, where are you from on the fly? Yeah, yeah. and and you Spanish. speak Spanish. And anyone else speak another language? Uh, Persian. Persian and? French. French. Mm -hmm. If you four wouldn't mind just coming up here and you're gonna see, and then I'm gonna teach something to the audience. We're just gonna do a little tiny cool. section of it. Mm -hmm. So if we could for, um, and while I'm handing it out, and you can look, Everything in blue is is what you're gonna. And well, Morgan's gonna do some uh, cities toward the end. It's multiple parts. The black is sung, so I'm gonna speak the sung part for now. But I'm gonna also just teach everybody one of the sung parts. Are we just doing this part? Or are we doing? Uh, am I saying I'm gonna just the last three the pages for? You're only reading in the blue. Okay, and just this too. Say, you can t pick one of them, okay. you don't, and you can say it in English. If you can do it in Chinese, great. Okay. But you don't you have to. You wait for the actual Chinese. Not right like now, back. yeah. Okay. Or, and it is here. why don't so you just do the Chinese here at the top? This can all be in English, okay. and all that blue and orange is in English, and, and that way it'll be easier. Is that okay? Do you want one? If you have one. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to go down? Because, yeah, we'll go down the road with the speaking. And I'll do the very first where are you from, just to get us going with someone. And then can you do it in Chinese? Yep. And then Spanish and then Persian and then French. Great. So this is what it ended up being like, but we had African Chinese and Russian. Um uh, so your part is you go and it's quiet. So it's four times we'll do four times. This is my story and this is my home. And four times this is my story and this is my song. And the last song, you can hold the note. And I know there are some singers here, so you can feel free to harmonize. But the basic goes like this. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my song. This is my story and this is my song. This is my story and this is my song. This is my story and this is my song. Want to harmonize inside that? That's great. So when I point to you, that happens. There's one other song part that we'll all do at the end, which is just this. I'm from Babylon. Can we all do that? I'm from Babylon. When we get there, I'll tell you. It comes <coughs> it's at the end. So uh, I'm going to cut through this. So it starts this, 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 this is not. There's lots of music. Not, not, not. There's also projections. This is not, not. This is, this is, this is not, 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 not. This is not, this is not a movie. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my home. This is my story and this is my song. This is my story and this is my song. This is my story and this is my song. This is my story and this is my song. Where are you from? Oh, it's all not like. De donde eres? Mi hija de man. Tu bien do. You really want to know where I'm from? And then do the English. You really want to know. You really want to know. <coughs> I'm from Venezuela. My shirt is from Old Navy. Made in Pakistan. I bought it in Queens. <laughs> I'm from where the Algonquin language once lived. I'm from the swampland filled in by dirt. I'm from the place where the glacier stopped. This is all song. Uh, from where the housing market dropped. From where we eat tomatoes from Mexico, mm. chocolate from Switzerland, drink coffee from Brazil. Where am I from? You really want to know? Where? 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 Great. You got it. And can you do the blue? I'm from? I'm from Sorrow's Kitchen. Let's just do English. I'm from only. Hotness. I'm from the place of rice and dumplings. Where it is, the place I'm from, the place where I just came from, the war, the calm after a thunderstorm. Another place? Samba. So, uh, vengo donde empezó el samba. Samba's where I'm from. The Mediterranean Sea. From violence, that's the space. I'm from a warm place. My mother's heart. 
Where I come from, you wouldn't know. Right here in this country, from the drone of cicadas and dry grass. From the purple mountain's majesty. No, really, that's where I come from. The place in the song. <laughs> <laughs> the song, bachata. The Nile River. My old house, wow. Struggle in black music and Pittsburgh. The light from the sun as it reflects off my window. I'm from the place where other girls are wearing scarves. The rice in the mud. A box of old photos under my parents' bed. A blue doge caravan. It's true. On the 11th floor. Stray cats under the window. Where frogs eat frogs. Let's flip the page and go to the blue. And can everybody do the This Is My Story really quietly again? This is my story, and this is my home. This is my story, and this is my home. This I'm from where story, mangoes fall to the ground. This is my story, and where you collect shells and make necklaces. Playing baseball this with carpets for bases. Playing cricket with garbage cans and sticks. This is my story. Me carried to Machu Picchu by my father. Nemo. Michael. Yeah, you, you, you. Michael Jackson's thriller on vinyl. It's the Caribbean Mountains. Scheherazade's castle. Tehran. Yak butter in front of a palace. A beautiful land. Sandies. The smell of sand after rain. A thousand and one voices to keep me alive. Everyone, I'm from Babylon. I'm from